Okay, today we're in Galatians chapter 5, and we just came out of chapter 4 where he drew this allegory uh, between being a child of the promise, a free of the, the child of the free woman, Sarah, versus the child of the slave woman, Hagar. And then that brings us into this verse 1. He says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Now, there are two types of slavery you can be in uh, spiritually. Number one, you could be in slavery to your sinful living, right? Or number two, on the other side of it, you can be in slavery to religiosity. You can be in slavery to the law instead of really living in the freedom that comes with knowing God and being free from the inside out because the Holy Spirit is moving you to be obedient. And so this is really what he's going to be unpacking in this chapter. You might want to read this one a couple of times. He's talking about the difference between law and faith once again. And he says this in verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Now we'll talk more about circumcision when we go back to Genesis in a couple of days. Because what happened is God gave circumcision to Abraham as a mark uh, for those who were Jewish. And so circumcision here represents sort of everything in the law, the religiosity of the Old Testament law. And they began to be focused on this outward sign of circumcision. And what Paul is saying, pretty shockingly here, is he's saying it's that has nothing to do with really being a child of God. It has nothing to do with whether you're circumcised or not, whether you're Jewish or Gentile. It doesn't matter. That doesn't count for anything, which is a really shocking thing for a former Pharisee to say. He said the only thing that matters is faith, right? Not law, faith working through love, okay? Because the church in Galatia was struggling with, there were these Judaizers coming in saying, Yeah, Jesus is good, but you also have to be circumcised. And Paul was saying, no, that's not true. Now, in verse 13, he pivots a little bit, and now he's talking about sort of the implications of this freedom that we should have, this new freedom that we have in Christ. He says, for you were called to freedom, brothers, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh or for your sinful living, but through love serve one another. So he wanted to make sure that they don't misunderstand what he's saying, which I think a lot of Christians do today. They think that grace gives us a license to sin. And Paul is saying here, no, not at all. That's not what I'm saying. He says, listen, you are called to live in freedom. You've been set free from the law, not to, not to disregard the law, but now to keep the law to the very spirit of the law rather than just to the letter of the law. In other words, don't use your freedom to be self-indulgent and sinful. And so as you as you read through this, he says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the, desire, the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. The desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you really want to do. So now that you're a follower of Jesus, the Bible says that you have the Holy Spirit in you, right, by faith. Not because you earned it, not by law, but by faith, like he said in Galatians 3. He says you have the Holy Spirit in you. So now, because of that, because the Holy Spirit is in you, you should do the things that are in your new nature to do, not in your old sinful nature. In your new nature, the stuff that you really want to do is to please God, not because it just says so in the law, but because the Spirit is in you and you really, out of a relationship with God, you want to please God. Now, he lists out some of the things that are evidences of living in the old sinful nature. And then he famously lists out, verse 22, the thing, the things that are evidence that you're living by the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is stuff like this. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And interestingly, he says, against such things, there is no law. In other words, this stuff doesn't contradict the law at all. Because if you live by the Spirit then you will fulfill the Spirit and the law at the same time. If you try to fulfill the law and live by the law, you won't get either one of them. And that's what he's talking about here. So, really rich passage. And again, in the context of everything we're talking about from all the way back to 
Galatians 12. Hopefully you understand why this is in our daily journal on the life of Abraham. So read chapter 5. Tomorrow we'll finish up Galatians chapter 6 and we'll go back to Genesis to dig into Abraham's story some more.